in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. I will also be with you. Welcome to this Eucharist. We are laying on of hands with prayer for healing. And welcome to those who are in the chapel, and also to those who are watching online. Dear friends, we meet in the name of our risen Lord, who knows our every need, who hears the cries of our hearts, who feels our deepest pains, and who heals our wounds. Amen. In Christ Jesus, God's love is made fully known, and through Christ's passion and resurrection, we are healed and brought to new and abundant life. We now offer ourselves to God in faith, renewing our confidence and trust in his inexhaustible mercy. And we share a moment of quiet for the moment to bring all that we want to bring to God this day, to confess for renewal, for forgiveness, for healing. God of mercy, Lord of life, you are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Embrace us with your love, heal the memories of hurt and failure, bind up the wounds of past mistakes, and by your forgiveness make us whole. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their promises, their petitions, Make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for the readings. from the book of Jeremiah. I will be the God of all the clans of Israel. It is the Lord who speaks. They shall be my people. The Lord says this, they have found pardon in the wilderness, those who have survived the sword. Israel is marching to his rest. The Lord has appeared to him from afar. I have loved you with an everlasting love, so I am constant in my affection for you. I build you once more. You shall be rebuilt, virgin, of Israel. Adorned once more, and with your tambourines, you will go out dancing gaily. You will plant vineyards once more on the mountains of Samaria. The planters have done their planting. They will gather the fruits. Yes, a day will come when the watchmen shout on the mountains of Ephraim, Up, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. For the Lord says this, Shout with joy for Jacob. Hail the chief of nations. 
proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. The responsor of Sinai. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. All nations, hear the word of the Lord. Proclaim it to the far of course. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and guard him as the shepherd guards his flock. The Lord, the Lord will guard us as the shepherd guards his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, has saved him from an overpowering hand. They will come and shout for joy on Mount Zion. They will stream to the blessings of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as the shepherd guards his flock. Then the young girls will rejoice and will dance. The men, young and old, will be glad. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console them, give them gladness for grief. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By his own choice, the Father made us his children by the message of the truth, so that we should be a sort of first fruits for of all that he created. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left Gennesaret and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Then out came a Canaanite woman from that district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, take pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him, Give her what she wants, they said, because he, she's shouting after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. She retorted, ah yes sir, but even house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do sit down. The Olympic Games have been surrounded by controversy for years and years. And this year's Games in Paris have been no different. And over the years there have been accusations of corruption, commercialization, and tastelessness. Um, and with all that's been happening over these last couple of weeks, there's been much to consider some of it good, some of it not so good. But there has been a great deal, I think, of excitement um, and human achievement, God-given ability, and hopefully the right kind of national pride 
when someone wins a medal and brings great joy to their country, like the wonderful young Keely Hodgkinson the other night, winning gold. One of the things I found very memorable about the opening ceremony was a boat travelling down the Seine with the refugee Olympic team abroad. 36 athletes representing the world's displaced population of over 100 million people. They come from 11 different countries of origin. The IOC president welcomed this refugee team as an enrichment to the Olympic community and said that during the games they will demonstrate the human potential of resilience and excellence despite all that they have been through. And on Sunday they won their first ever medal which was bronze for boxing. And it is hoped that the inclusion of that group in the Olympics will bring encouragement and hope to refugees all around the world. Meanwhile, in our country, there is serious civil unrest following the terrible murder of three little girls in Southport a week ago, following the false claims that the person involved was a refugee, which of course they weren't. And in the Bishop of London's words, she recently said this, the tragedy has been exploited by those with their own agenda. Right across the country, UK minority ethnic communities have been targeted in the most appalling fashion, with people of colour attacked, mosques ransacked, homes graffitied, as those filled with senseless hate have taken to the streets to spread a message of fear and evil. The racism and racist violence that we have witnessed, she said, has been impossible to, as impossible to comprehend as the original attack, and none of it has any place in our society. Of course, there are deep-rooted problems in our society which are very complex and need addressing, particularly in parts of the country where people feel they no longer have power, they no longer have agency, there is no work, and the infrastructure is falling apart. Nevertheless, as she said, this violence and racism has nothing to do with being British. Today's gospel story is a difficult one, and it actually in itself highlights racial and religious barriers between people, and it shows them being broken down. It's the description of an uncomfortable dialogue between Jesus and a Canaanite woman who was desperate for his help. And as ever, it helps to put this passage into context. Through Abraham, God had promised that through blessing the Jewish people, he would bless the whole world. Jesus, born a Jew, was brought up with that understanding. But it could be argued that the traditions and the religious leaders of his day had lost sight of that calling to be a universal blessing to the whole world. Jesus was brought up in a tradition which suggested that every day you should wake up thanking God that you're not a Gentile and also that you're not a woman. So that was how people were expecting to start their day. Jesus, we have to remember, was born as one of us within a specific historical and religious context. And he grew in age and understanding, just as we all hope to, as we grow. And as he began his ministry, it soon became apparent that his growing revelation about God's universal love 
faced much hostility from his own people. And this encounter with the Canaanite woman happened just after one of those events. Very, very hostile response. He'd gone away into Gentile territory to get away from all the criticism from his own people. He could have well been feeling very angry. And then, of course, we have to remember that rabbis didn't talk to women in public. And there'd been an age-old enmity between Jews and Canaanites. So this is the context in which this desperate woman approaches him, shouting, strange, unclean, embarrassing. The instant reaction from the disciples is to send her away. But Jesus' response is rather nuanced. You can see the way he responds to her, a process happening. Firstly, he is silent. Secondly, he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And then the third is to oft utter those very difficult words. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And many people have speculated about this strange saying of Jesus, have different ideas about why he said it. And one explanation is that it was rhetorical. Sometimes when you make a point, when you teach someone something, you have a debate, you state the opposite. You use irony. You say the opposite to what you believe to make a point. And maybe Jesus was appearing to put the exclusive orthodox position taken by his disciples to say it out loud to show how wrong it sounded. Can there really be people of faith outside um, the covenant? Should I be blessing and healing people who are our old enemies? That's the rhetorical question. And of course, we know what the answer is for Jesus. Yes, absolutely. So there was this poor Canaanite woman beside herself with worry about her daughter. And she can give as good as she gets. She actually provides the answer to this question. Should Jesus help her? Her wit and her faith win the argument. She comes back at him. Ah, yes, sir. But even house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from the master's table. And then Jesus says something about this woman that he hardly said about anybody else. Great is your faith. The only other person he said this about was the Roman centurion who asked Jesus to heal his slave. Even the disciples weren't described as people as having great faith. In fact, he rebuked them as having little faith. But this outsider, this Canaanite woman, showed great faith, as did the Roman centurion. Two Gentiles, two people outside the covenant. So what does this difficult Bible passage say to us today? Well, it shows that it's worth looking at the context of Bible passages. Some of the difficult ones can be fruitful if we pursue their meaning. It shows us that Jesus was human as well as divine and grew as we do in understanding. He was prepared to be taught by a woman. It encourages us to pers persevere in prayer and worship even when God seems to be completely silent. And it shows us that the love of Jesus is for everyone. No one is outside the covenant. No one is beyond the pale. No one is an outsider. No one is in the wrong tribe. There is no such thing in Christianity. Those who maintain or put up artificial barriers between big groups of people do so in direct contravention of 
the teachings of the church. And I finish with a few more words from Bishop Sarah. Many people of colour, including friends and colleagues, and members of congregations, are feeling threatened and afraid right now, either directly or by what we are seeing unfold. Together, we must do all we can to look out for and to protect one another and those we are privileged to serve in one of the most diverse cities in the world. Amen. 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 So let us pray to the Father through Christ in the power of the Spirit. We pray for our country today. We pray for unity. At a time of strife and disorder, we pray for those who feel that violence and aggression is the answer to their problems. That they would be able to recognize Christ in both neighbor and in stranger. And they would put away violence and aggression. We pray to for the police, for the legal profession who are being particularly targeted. We pray for our brothers and sisters of other faiths. We pray for all who seek to bring peace and reconciliation in communities and to be good neighbours. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We continue to pray for Israel and Gaza, for Ukraine and Russia. We give thanks for the joy and excitement given to so many by the Olympic Games. We pray for those who are taking part and those who are watching for their safety and enjoyment. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We pray for all who suffer at this time, in body, mind, or spirit. Especially we pray for the families who are grieving the death of those three little girls and the communities in which they are part. For those who are trying to bring healing and hope to them, in their great grief. And among those who have asked us for their prayers, for our prayers for them, for and uh, for Natalie, for Luana. For Ben and Michael, Royston, Ted, Susanna, Nita, Jackie, Lucy, Nicola, Yvette, Anne, Ted, Isabella, and Susan. And in a moment's quiet, we bring to God any we know who need our prayers for wholeness and healing this day. Lord, in your mercy. 
mercy. Yeah. 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 We bring to God all who have died, especially remembering Mary, Paul, Diana and Vera, for all who have lost their lives through violence or war, for those we love but see no longer, and for all who will die this day with no one to pray for them. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy. And a moment's quiet for our own thoughts and prayers this day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you can, would you stand for the peace? <coughs> we are the body of Christ, and the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God for heaven. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God for heaven. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us upon the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels 
and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Now of God, we take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Now of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Now of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
the blood of Christ. spiritual communion for those who are watching online. A loving God in union with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I'm exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Strengthen us in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your grace and glory. Amen. And so we offer the laying on of hands with prayer or healing. And this could be for yourself or on behalf of another person. You're welcome to mention their name when we come for prayer. Um, or it can be for a situation. And so we begin by praying for those who are watching online. Come, Holy Spirit. of God and trusting in his might alone. Receive Christ's healing touch to make you whole. May Christ give you healing of body, mind and spirit. Deliver you from every evil and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
We say together, God of all compassion, by the dying and rising of your Christ, you restore us to yourself and inform us as your mother. May we have been refreshed with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, be renewed by your Holy Spirit, and made ready for the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. God our Father, by whom we are called to ventures, of which we cannot see the ending, and by paths as yet untrodden, give us faith to go out always with good courage, knowing that in the power of your Holy Spirit we are made strong and that your love will never fail us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love and those you find it hard to love, now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.